Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number five, targeting the G major chord. Remember, as rock stars, we make our own rules. But like, making rules is hard, man. So I find it's best to do a little rule making every morning with the help of coffee and Excel. But like, Excel is just helping. We're the ones actually making the rules. We're the ones making the rules round here. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but did so in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you could begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the scale, the chords we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently like 12 tabs down below. Bunch of these example tabs and then we got the OG orange tab the og orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section it now acting as the starting point going forward mapping out the entire fretboard giving us the entire musical alphabet in letter format number format combining letter and number format providing a key that can be adjusted with this green cell adjusting the worksheets on the right hand side which will give us the scale that we have adjusted the key to with that green cell and then give us the notes within that scale give us then the chord constructions as well as interval information we then wanted to map out in the key of c the chords constructed from that key in open position so we did that starting with the one chord over here and mapped it out open position fret one through three we went through to the four chord the f major then we went to the g major back to the d minor and then we went to the e minor and then we went to the six which is the a minor and then to the diminished now we're going to go jumping to the middle of the fretboard and look at the the scales from the middle of the fretboard so the idea being that we've kind of mapped out this first bit this first part open position of the fretboard in scale position if we put them all together we'd end up with this glob of a scale and now we're working on mapping out in the middle of the guitar based on scale positions first and then we'll talk more about chords so we did this in terms of our pentatonic and then we moved into our major uh, scale positions and now we're going to be uh, continuing on with this now the next thing we started to look at is to say how are we going to target the notes in our position up here how can we move from the from the uh, notes we're playing or the chords we're playing in open positions to utilize this middle point of the guitar and we talked about how we can target in the key of c and then we move to the key of F. Now we're gonna do a similar process, but we're gonna move on down to the key of G. So to do that, I'm gonna copy this tab over and I will get to the guitar, but I kinda of wanna just show everybody on the worksheet. So if you're following along with the worksheet, you can see what's happening here. So I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna drag a new sheet to the right, double click on it. And I'm just gonna change this to a G. So I'm gonna say this is the G, okay. So then I'm going to go over here and let's move our cursor down to the G and I'm going to change the rules here so that these three colors will now represent the G, B, and D. So let's select our uh, fretboard, home tab, styles, drop down, and we're going to the conditional formatting. I'm going to say, no, we're going to go into manage rules, manage rules, and then I'm going to double click on each of these rules. So this one with the light green, double clicking on it. I'm going to change the cell to now be equal to this G. Okay, it's not going to change yet until I'm done with all of them and I hit OK. I'm going to double click on the red one and I'm going to change this cell to be the B and then OK. And then I'm going to double click on the yellow one and I'm going to change this cell to be the D. And then once I hit OK again, it should change our worksheet to the right. Boom. And so I think that changed everything, hopefully. I'm going to drag these down then as well. So we'll bring these down for now. And so we have the same shape over here. But now we've got the these highlighted instead of these. So let's go ahead and format paint this one 
there's my G format paint this one, there's my B, and then I'm gonna format paint this one, and there's my D, I'm gonna format paint these three on top of here, and so there is our starting point. Now the G and open position, let's map that out. So we have this G shape, our familiar G shape in open position looks like this. Duh, 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 duh. And so although we map, we're mapping this out in the key of C, the G shape fits within it. We can play this basically, that's one way we play the G, that G shape basically fits within it. Now, when we move up to this part, the first thing we might target, if we're thinking of targeting a G, is of course the one note of the chord, which would be a G. So as we do that, because we're playing in the key of C, we're using all the chords in the key of C, we can either think of ourselves like in the key of C and then switch to a G chord, or we can think of ourselves in the related mode. So I'm gonna put the related mode on the right. I'm gonna put my cursor on the AS to EC, right click and unhide. Oh, I hit again. I do that every time. Why do I do that? What is, I have an issue with the unhide thing. So if I go down here, the G is uh, the, uh, the f five, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So if we make that the one, let's take a look at the mode. Let's go into the right. We're looking at the mode. Da -da 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 over to the right, over to the right, looking for the mode. There it is, Mixolydian. So I'm gonna hide from EZ. This is how easy it is. We're hiding from EZ on over. And if you're not an Excel wizard, it might not seem that easy, but just keep practicing keep practicing. So we're going to right click and hide. We'll have the worksheet already set up if it's not that easy to. So we'll hide this here. And then uh, I'll scroll down a bit. So now you've got the same concept if I was to copy this and make that the one. So now we can kind of practice if you want to practice your G in particular, then you might want to make that basically the one right and then start uh, uh, noodling around that chord or you can think of it as you're going to just basically try to make the five chord the center the tonic by playing around it okay so then I'm going to hide up top let's make this full screen mode and so then I can probably make this a little larger since it's full screen mode and so is that good will that be good enough I think that's pretty good so we can kind of see everything that's going on here okay so 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 now if we're playing over here and we're 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 playing uh, we're focusing in our on our g so the couple ways that we can do this is is i built my g from the key of c so i could then start on a key of c right and try to make that my tonic and then move to the g and then back to the c f if I do that, I'm really, I'm still kind of making, I have to play the C most often, basically, because I'm trying to make that the tonic, right? Because I'm thinking to myself in the key of C. If I want to practice the key of G, I could switch, of course, to another, the G major scale, but that's not what we're practicing right now, right? Because then we'd have to switch all the positions up top. We're going to try to keep all the chords the same and practice making the five kind of the root with the same chords, which basically means you'd be playing in Mixolydian if you want to think of it as the one note. And let's, let's I can, well, I will leave that here. Uh, or, or you could just kind of think that you're playing around the five. Now that's a little bit more difficult to do than playing, than like switching to the related minor, for example, but still completely a doable thing, right? So you can, how can you do that most easily? Well, you're going to play around the G, start with the G. Maybe go to the A minor, an E, back to the G. I'm gonna just try to try to make that G my center point. I'm gonna listen to try to make that G basically my center point. Now then, as I do that, then I'm gonna say, well, how can I move up here to my position up top and and use those notes up top? Now, when we look at these notes up top, it looks like a mess because we have all these different colors. Let's just recap that real quick. 
All of the colors that are up top here represent notes that are in the major scale, one of these seven notes. The, then, and then they were originally blue. And then on top of the blue notes, we put the green notes, which are the pentatonics, which fit perfectly inside of the blue notes. And then on top of that, we put then the, the, G, uh, the G chord. Now note that the G chord itself does not fit perfectly into the five note pentatonic scale, right? It's not gonna fit into the five note pentatonic scale because it, for, like it has this B down here, which is one of the notes that are excluded. So when we look at the five note pentatonic scale, you're, you're, th you're thinking that fits perfectly with the C or the major and its related minor. So some of the other chord constructions aren't gonna fit in there. So if you learn the pentatonic and you're like, I've got the pentatonic down, but I don't have the major scale down, you can think about it as the pentatonic and then possibly add that one note that's not within it, right? So when I go to a G, I could say, okay, I'm gonna, just gonna play the five, the pentatonic, boom, 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 you know, that shape. And then I'm going to add to it possibly the note that's not in it, or you can just not target the third, right? Because the third's not gonna be in the pentatonic. Okay, and so then, and then we could basically try to do our method of sliding in and targeting, say, the G, right? So if I'm playing something in the G, here's gonna be the G right here. So I can say there's a G, and then I have a G down here. So if I'm playing my standard G like this, you know, I could think about, okay, how can I slide in? Usually my pointer finger is kind of an easy one to slide in with. So if I was to say, let's make this up here, let's actually copy this so I can get a different color. I'll copy this and we're on my pointer finger and that position is here. And so then I'm gonna be like, okay, let's slide that in to this position, right? So I'm gonna be like, okay, boom. Right, and then I'm just kind of noodling around, going boom, 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 and then back to that G, right? So I'm kind of ending it on the G. So I kind of have a, have a starting point, my G chord, and I'm looking at a destination, and I'm trying to follow a finger in here. Instead of, instead of me picking up my hand, because if I pick up my hand, most likely what I'm gonna do is go, uh, right? Because I'm gonna start playing the pentatonic from top to bottom. But if you follow a string in, then you're, you're less likely to get confused on where you go when you follow your hand and you're probably gonna start from different positions, right? So if I follow. So then you can, and then I'm gonna end right there. And then if I wanted to end uh, down here, we could follow a position down here and try to. So I'm just kind of noodling around and trying to end on those two notes. That's one way we can do things. Now, also note that this G, you might get used to playing it this way because this works well when you're, when you're moving from a C to a G. And so then in that case, you might be following this finger in again because, because this finger, you can always use it as kind of, it's a nice pivot finger, right? So you can follow that finger in. And then there's my G up top. Now it's nice, to, you don't always have to follow your pointer finger, but that's just like the easiest one to kind of follow in, right? So if I was playing something, if I was playing it this way, you might actually follow in your pinky if you feel comfortable with doing that. And that leads right into a G. So now I'm in this position, four fingers. I'm starting with my pinky over here. So you can follow that finger in, you can play it from this position, right? So I can play my G over here like that. And then basically I could follow this finger in. Sorry, <laughs> I lost it there for a second. Now, the other thing that's interesting about the G is, is that there's another G shape right here. So basically, uh, if, if you if you look at this G, if we if we saw it from a caged uh, system, you're going to say there's a G right there, and here's my tonic, or here's my G note up top. So you could then you could then pivot around and say, well, can I build 
a major chord from that, we could, and it would look like that. That's your bar chord. So we haven't got into that bar chord that much other than to say that basically we can change this bar chord to instead of barring that top off to at least pick up this note or even those two notes, but I'm just going to pick up that one for sure. And that's going to be our, what you might think of as your F shape that's been moved up to a G, but it's really a, from a, from a cage system, you want to think of it as your E shape, right? Here's my E major shape, which we haven't looked at here because we only have the minor in our construction. But if it was a major, you'd have this finger down. If I was to bar that off, it would look like this. And then, and then if I move that up to the F, it looks like this. And then I feel like I don't need to bar it off because I just need maybe these four strings. It's easier to play. So it looks like that. And then if I move that up, this is a G now. So it's a, it's an kind of like your F shape, which is really an E bar chord that's now shaped like this. We could play it the whole way, but play it like this. Now that's a pretty nice, useful position here to then move into your fret five, right? Because you're right next to it. So if, if you were to go from this G and then to this same G construction, then you're right next to it. And I could follow this finger in pretty easily. And then I can always use the trusty power chord here. If you play that G and down one and over one, you get that power chord. Uh, and so you can always kind of, that's a good place to end a lot of the time. I could follow in, you know, any of these fingers, possibly I follow in this finger. And I'm ending on this <laughs> G up top. So that's going to, so, so, so with the G, it's useful to, to see that I can play it this way and I can follow that F, that F position and play it this way. So if you're noodling around, you might start with a G like this, go to that F, which, which is in the key of C because we're playing in the G mixolydian and then move it up to your G here. And then I, that's a perfect position for me to then move up into my pentatonic or scale shape that we're working on in, in fret five. And then of course we can easily move back Any of this position here that you're actually holding down is clearly something in the scale as well, right? So I can I can hold down, I know this is in the scale and I know this is in my chord position. So you can kind of arpeggiate that. Okay, so then you might target, uh, if you, we targeted the G, the next thing is to say, okay, well, can I build like a chord around, around uh, that G? So let's look at that. I'm gonna say, okay, well, there's a G, there's a D and there's a B. And so that should look kind of familiar uh, because although we haven't been playing the D major, we've been playing the D minor because that's in the C, but if we had a D major, it's a common, very common chord, it would look like this. So it would have that shape to it in open position. If it was in open position over here, and then it would have that open D uh, up top as well. So if I was to move that up to here, that's going to be our shape over here. So most people see this shape basically as a D type of shape. And then you get all three notes that are in the chord. This would be basically the root of it. Now note, to make it really a D shape, you'd have to finger it like this and reach back over here to pick up that G too. Because remember when I played an open position that I'm ringing this one out. But you don't need to do that in order to get just the chord. What you can do is mute this string up top and then just play these three. And then you could try to, like you could try, if you have big hands, you can almost mute these two strings to try to not ring out that one. But you have to have a little bit better aim. You can't just be like whacking all over this fretboard and try to mute that because uh, you're going to ring out this A. But you can have decent aim and still be able to do that even with a pick uh, by muting this string up top. So that's going to be that. If you look at that from 
a caged position, which we'll talk more about later. Note what's happening here. We have our G here. Here's our G shape. And then we go from the G to the E. So here was our E shape, which we're playing like this. Boom. And then that's still a G chord. But now I have an E shape. And then if I move that up from an E to a D, the D shape, notice the D shape isn't back here. We're talking about the D shape that's at the front, at the top of this pentatonic shape. It's, so you might say, hey, I see a D shape like right here. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at this one that's towards the top of the, of the, of the shape. So there's the, uh, there's the D shape. And you can remember from our last discussion when we looked at the F shape, that when you see this D shape, that leading note right here is going to lead in to uh, the C shape, which is outside of our position. But just to tie that into kind of what we saw uh, before, and we'll talk more about the caged uh, system later. So that's one way that uh, that you can think about it. So I can play it like this, or I can say, I'm going to play this note up top. And then I'm going to say, this one is always my power chord. So I can always do something like this. And then I can mute these strings up top if I don't want the A to ring out. And then instead of grabbing this G, because I don't need it, it's a duplicate. If I want to get my third, I can just grab this bottom string right there. So in, that, in doing that, what I'm doing is I'm muting this B so that B doesn't ring out. You can kind of just hang this finger, the meat of it over if you don't want that B to ring out. If it does, it's the 13 but you probably don't want it to ring out. So that's another way that you can you can get that G sound. You might not grab that B, you might not even go for it. You just say, I'm just gonna do my power chord thing and try to get that to ring out, but it's pretty easy to get that with your pinky and you can build it that way. So then uh, you have this construction where you can see, okay, above, uh, above the G, I have a D and to the left, I have my B. You can see what that is. That's coming from this, this bar chord, this E that we converted to look kind of like a shifted up F that we've been playing in, the, the, the simple F. And then the, all I really need from that F to play it are these top three, which are in my position here, which is right here. So I could simplify this shape even though that's pretty comfortable to play right there by putting it up here, just these three. So that's another way we can play uh, the, the whole chord if we wanted to. And then we can play the whole chord this way. We can say, okay, now I've got my, my tonic is down here. I'm gonna move this out. We're not playing that B. We've got the G down below and above it is the fifth. And then I'm gonna reach on over and grab this B. It's a little bit tricky. You can probably grab it with this finger with your pointer if you have big enough hands, which is kind of nice because then you have your pinky open to either put it somewhere else or to mute the strings. But if you don't, if you don't have as big hands, you can use the pinky and you can probably mute these strings down here with the meat of the bottom of your pinky. That's prob probably not played as much, but it's a useful arpeggiation of the of the notes in the chord okay so there's a couple ways that if we wanted to end down in the, the whole thing off now i'm playing if i'm playing the g over here and i'm and i'm going okay i'm going to go do, 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 and then i'm going to end it like that right So now here's these three up top that I'm just hitting. I'm looking for that little chord up top and that kind of gives it some resolution, which is a little bit more solid than just hitting the G, right? You get that bling, and then I can, right? So, so then of course you could target any other uh, note. So you could say, well, I'm not gonna target the G, instead I'm gonna target the B. So if I go up top and say, okay, the Bs are there, there, and there. So if you're playing, so we have the Bs are gonna be here, here, and here. 
Is that right? Is that the B? No, here. So if you're playing here, you could be zooming in. And let me play it up here. Here's my G up in this position. the B we can and the B is kind of interesting when you're playing in mixolydian because usually that's a leading tone if I was in C major going to uh, the C uh, so it's kind of an interesting but in any case now we're gonna go to let's go to the D so we could target the D which is here here and then so I can say okay here's my D's are there and I got a D there so so notice if you're ending with a D you can also like make a chord you know with it so I can my power chord whenever you see something that has this shape that's kind of high up and I can play the one down and to the right you can kind of use that D as a power chord kind of construction to basically so if I'm playing my G to this G back to my G. There's my D right there. D. D. Power chord D. Back to a G. D. Back to my G. D. Power chord D. Back to my G, right? And then I could say, okay, I could target things that are outside of, of this. I can target anything that's in this shape, right? Even if it's not in uh, the chord. So I could then say, well, I could still target, you know, my C, even though I'm focusing in on the G, right? Which might be a little risky to do because then you're likely that it might start sounding like you're trying to play C major when you're trying to mix it, make it a G mixolydian. But my, I know my C's are here. Mm -hmm here, here, so if I play this G, back to my G, there's a C, back to my G, Anyways, you, so you can target, you know, obviously any of the notes and see what see what that's going to basically feel like. Remember that the ones that are in the the chord that you're playing should be going closer to home. Those are going to be cold and you're closer to home. When you use things that are further away from or outside of the chord, you would think you're more in the wilderness, which is which is fine as long as you can kind of find your way back and then and then get back to uh, back to the home is the general idea. So we want to be moving from a position that we're trying to set a base as comfortable feeling of home move away from that adding tension and then going back towards home these three notes are the ones that are going to be feeling like you're going towards home the g in and of itself is going to be basically home itself and that g plus the b because the b is the differentiating factor between a major and a minor is going to give you that feeling now, the next question that will generally come up in our mind is going to be, well, how can I play in the key of G major rather than playing in the key of like G mixolydian? How can I make that basically the one chord of a major scale? One way we can see that is we can say, well, this is this shape right here is in the C major. So where is the C located? It's on my pinky on the top string. At least it's easiest to see most of the time with top string. So we're like, it's on my pinky. So where can I find a G here where I can make it my pinky position to start with? And of course, our G is right here, and we're basically within that open position over here. So it gets a little bit confusing because you have to deal with the nut. But if you were to imagine 
that you push this whole shape back on over here so that this G is going to be your pinky shape, then we can pull that shape back. And we'll, I'll show you that in a second so we can see that in a little bit more detail. That's one way that you can kind of visualize that. And then all the related notes would be pulling over. Now, we're not going to talk about uh, the G major uh, in detail, but I just want to mention that so that because that often is going to be a question that that's going to be coming into people's minds. The other way you might think of it is you're saying, well, what if I made if I made like that G right there, there's there's a G. What if I made it like uh, the one note and then I went down? So what if I made that my pinky note right here? And then I tried to I tried to build my scale as I would from top to bottom. Right. So it's like, OK, there's my top mm -hmm. string ends at that G and then I'm going to go down here and then go to the next the next string which would have a pattern like this and then it gets kind of wonky though because you get into this pattern right here which you get into the kink with the strings but you can kind of start to think about it like that if you wanted to right you could say well can't I shift the pattern down and say well if that's the one chord and it's my pinky can I shift the whole thing down and make that G which is what I'm targeting on the one and then make that my pinky finger and then shift this whole shape down. So that's another thing that you can kind of play with if you want to visualize it in a few different ways. Uh, let's go down to our frets down here where we we made our, our fretboard down here. And I'm going to, so this was our major that we made. So I'm going to just clear the formatting for this one. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go up top and close this out put that down for now and let's see if I can get showing the ribbon for now and then is this the one I want I'm going to pick this one up and let's imagine that we're going to change this not to an F but to a G right so I'm going to put my cursor between I and AK right click and unhide I did it right that time I did it right and then I'm going to go up top and I also need to unhide between 127 and 143 right click and unhide and then i'm going to make this key in the key of g now which is a note number 11 and so now we've got our major uh in the key of g so then i'm going to hide once again from here on over let's go like 12 to 12 frets out and then right click and hide and okay and then back on over and so then down here and then i'm going to say now we have our one which is now in the key of g so i'm going to un uh do this whole thing i'm going to say clear clear the rules and then let's add the rules back in so let's move this down da -da, da -da, da -da. And then I'm going to just add the rules. So I'm going to say, okay, let's make some rules here. We're going to say this is going to be equal to, I'll make the whole thing blue to start off with. So now we're in the key of G. And we're just going to make everything blue just to see some comparing and some contrasting. You don't have to say contrast because if you're comparing, that means you're contrasting. Stop wasting words. You have to, but you have to say, because it sounds cool. You have to say compare and contrast. You can't just be like, we're going to compare. How can you not say contrast to? You don't need to say contrast. You're wasting people's time. All you need, contrast is implied when you say compare. I don't know. I think it sounds better when you say compare and contrast. And the fact that it sounds better is reason enough to say the second part of the phrase because of the beauty of the symmetry okay i don't know what i'm talking about let's go ahead and say uh this is going to be this one okay they're all blue they're all blue and then i'll put the conditional formatting for the g is going to be green boom boom and then conditional formatting, boom, B's red, boom, boom, D's yellow, and boom, boom. And then I'll put this over here, boom, boom. 
boom, 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 boom. Okay, so there we have it. And, and so, so, so now we can see in open position, we have our G fits in this shape now. So now we've got our G fits over here, our nice G shape fits right there. And da, da, and then let's do another one, copy and paste. And then we have uh, this one right here. And then with our caged system, if, if I start on a G, then the, the next thing up, C-A-G-E, right? So then we're gonna have our E position that we saw basically. So let's put this here. And then we're gonna have our E, which we saw on our fretboard. I won't map out the whole uh, e position, but then it's going to go to a D, right? And then that's the one that we were looking at basically up top, right? So here's our D positions. And so, but so you can see that those shapes are still in there for the for the note, but the the shape around it is going to be different. Because because now we're in the key, we're in the key of of G as opposed to the key of C. So in other words, let me go up to this shape up top and show you what I mean. And so let's go ahead and hide from here down uh, to here, right click and hide that stuff. And then let's see if I can make a full screen. So, so now you can see that in this position, uh, uh, well, let's just move this up here. So we have the same position. We still have our shape, right? Here's our, here's our D kind of shape. That's, that's making a C. I mean, it's, that's making a G chord. It's still down there, but the shape around it is not exactly the same, right? The shape around it's not exactly the same because, uh, so, so if you wanted to switch your mind, if you're going from like, if you're going from like a C chord to a G chord, you can switch in your mind to shift the entire fretboard, right? To, to now be in basically the key of G, which is, which is going to have, or you can keep your mind in the key of C, which will have the three notes of the key of, of the chord of G within it. But the whole shape around it is still basically built from the key of C, right? So, so those are the things that, that little, sh that, that shifting of your mind going, okay, now I'm, I'm going to be moving from here. And so also just realize that when we label this position, like this position, uh, if I was to, if I was to label this position here, then you might call that, uh, I would call it then position. Well, you could call it a D shaped position, right? Because that's what some people might call it from a caged perspective and to keep and to finish the D shape. However, that would be similar to the open position. You'd have to pick up this open uh, G right there. But remember that this shape will also fit into to this shape up here. This chord fits into this shape up here, but it would be unique if you fit it into the pentatonic scale. So when you're trying to figure out where you are on the fretboard, one way you can start to label these shapes is you can say, well, that's a, a D shaped pentatonic, you know, major scale around it, right? That's in the key of G. And what I would typically call it is just, is to name, uh, is to name the positions. And we're starting with position one here. So then we would be going up to, I would call this basically position number three. Not everybody uses that convention, but it's fairly well used. And let me show you what I mean by that over here. So this is this is the one where we mapped out all of the positions. Now here's the one where we, so here's the scale overview. So we started on fret five, right? This is what I'm calling position one. And then the next one is gonna be this position two. And then here we are in this uh, position three, which is this green one. Uh, down here. So you could call it a D or you can call it basically, you know, position number three. So we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that once we start moving from this position on up, 
because we're going to look everything at everything from the key of C moving from this position, what I would call position one uh, to position two. But obviously, the, all these stuff kind of blends together. So I'm just trying to point it out a little bit as we go so that you can, if you want to dig more into that stuff, you can dig into it now if you want. So I'm going to unhide and I'm going to set up the worksheet for next time. So I'm going to make this smaller and let's make it to like right here. And then I'm going to hide from here to here just to get the setup here. And then I'm going to go from here to here. Honestly, someone keeps on stealing stuff off of my porch over here. I imagine that it's some crackhead that's stealing stuff off my porch. But the other night, I actually, I actually ordered some vegetables to be to be left from Farm Fresh, and I could just imagine the the crackhead. You could tell that the, you could tell that the thing was cracked open. The box was cracked open, the, but the box was left largely intact because apparently crackheads don't like kale. That's what I'm just. <laughs> He was probably about to throw the entire box of vegetables all over the high, all over the hallway in a crack-fueled fit of rage, but then thought, hey, maybe I can cause more damage by just letting him eat the kale. I mean, if he wants to torture himself by eating kale, then that's like the most harm I can do, man. So, <laughs> I honestly, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about hanging kale all over my door frame to fend off the crackheads. You know, you keep the crackheads away like garlic keeps away the vampires <laughs> anyway i'm just joking i don't know i don't know anyway what, what was i doing here so i'm gonna then go up top and i think that's basically good so let's just zoom in a bit here and then i'm gonna zoom in a bit more and so and so we're on the major scale and so maybe I'll unhide over here as well from AS, right click and unhide. And so there we have that. And then I'll put it back on the full screen to, to, to put it back to always with the ribbon. And then next time uh, we'll do a similar process, but we'll be moving, uh, maybe we'll move back up to the minors, to the two chord, to the D minor.